why Elon's Martian dream will never happen. Elon looked to NASA to see what their aspirations for Mars were, but they had none. He looked around the world and found even more of the same, or significantly less of it, but either way, nobody was looking toward Mars. He wanted to see a greenhouse growing on Mars to inspire the next generation of intrepid explorers, but all he got was mocked for his naive hubris. Not one to be deterred by one or two turds, he created SpaceX, and it nearly bankrupt him. His long-term objective was clear, to make humanity a multi-planetary species. We're 20 years in, and whether he's any closer to that goal is up for debate, but SpaceX has made massive strides in the right direction. They are easily the world leader in rocketry, especially at their price point, and efforts to get humans to Mars are now closer than they've ever been. But they're still nowhere close to reality. Elon Musk is a dreamer, and I love that about him, but his dream of putting humans on Mars for a permanent settlement are just... Well, they're never going to happen. I'm Brian. Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty late for an opening title, but here we are. Well, let's first look at why it can happen, kind of. The launch capacity exists, kind of. In a pinch, Falcon Heavy could do the trick. Elon's counting on Starship, but that's still in development. But a heavy lift vehicle capable of getting payloads to Mars? Well, that already exists, and he could absolutely use it. It would be a compromise so massive as to stop the project in its tracks, as it has, but it technically could work. If Starship is completed in the next 10 years, the payload capacity to Mars will move quickly from kinda realistic to serious. The cost is almost non-prohibitive. I mean, it's expensive, sure, but we're not talking Apollo mission expensive. If Starship development is completed as expected, it's entirely possible SpaceX could launch Mars missions for under $200 $200 million each. Five of those, that's a billion dollars. 50, 10 billion, 500 launches would be a paltry $100 billion. At that point, he wouldn't have even burned through half his net worth to say nothing of the myriad ways in which his net worth is likely to continue increasing over the next 10 to 20 years between Starlink, full self-driving, insurance, other factors. I mean, there's too many to name. There are plenty who would undertake the mission. Yes, even with a low probability of success, the number of potential first Martian settlers would be a list sufficiently long that qualified candidates could still be vetted and placed Even for a guaranteed suicide mission, tons of people applied for other companies' ventures, and this would appear, at least on the surface, slightly less sure to result in a swift demise. And yes, I'm talking about the briefly viable Mars mission that was going to be a one-way trip. So now, let's talk about the realistic stuff More specifically, why it can't, mostly, happen. Transit time. It's a long commute, and exponentially so in zero gravity. Being trapped in a small capsule, like what's currently possible with Dragon, would likely drive the crew insane, though tests on Earth have proved it's not impossible. The same experiment hasn't been tested in zero gravity. 
The journey is about seven months long, which sounds a bit bad, until you realize that the longest time ever spent in space by any human ever was only 14 months, and that resulted in serious health problems, both in terms of muscle and bone atrophy. Humans just weren't meant for low to no gravity environments. The months in transit round trip would be unprecedented, but even the time on the surface of Mars would do little to help. But more about that in a bit. Radiation. Well, for the unaware, humans, and really almost all forms of life as we know it, do not well endure prolonged exposure to radiation. Mitigating radiation during the trip to Mars in what's essentially a tin can hurling through the cosmos would be difficult and likely result in serious long-term health problems, but that's just on the way there. Upon arrival, visitors would find that the lack of a thick atmosphere and a near total lack of a magnetosphere on Mars means that the sun's radiation that we're mostly shielded from on Earth is vastly more dangerous on Mars. Well, this could be mitigated by putting the habitats below the surface so the soil can absorb most of the radiation, but that's way more complicated than, you know, digging out an igloo. Humans would be ill-suited to dig out their own shelter upon arrival while wearing cumbersome spacesuits with complicated life support systems. It's kind of a recipe for disaster. Surface pressure and temperature. The surface of Mars is often extremely hot or extremely cold, and the air pressure is always well below survivable levels for humans. If your suit loses pressure, you die. If your suit loses power, you die. In both cases, it's likely to be unconscionably slow and painful. Unlike while exploring the New West or the untamed Amazon, both of which had humans already in residence and where gold and salmon filled the streams, well, these would be fatal complications on Mars. Pre-building the habitat is critical. It won't be enough to land a craft or two on the surface in advance. I mean, those could provide shelter or scientific research spaces, but they couldn't provide return launch capacity nor any protection from the critical dangers of life on Mars. In order to get humans to Mars and return them safely, we would need an army of robots to land in advance and build an underground habitat and all needed support infrastructure for a return trip. I mean, yes, Tesla has a humanoid robotics program in the works, but it's not even in its infancy and could take a generation to reach the capabilities needed to autonomously pre-build for a settlement like that or even for the briefest visit, and even if it's possible at all. If the starship carrying humans misses its landing target by even a degree, they would be so far off the mark that they would be unable to reach the robot-built settlement and would simply die trapped in their spacecraft. One-third gravity. Zero gravity is bad, but the one-third gravity of Mars, relative to Earth, really isn't much better. I mean, it would slow the wasting of bone and muscle mass, including the pretty critical muscles in your heart. But prolonged time on the surface of Mars, especially in the case of settlers and their offspring, would require an evolutionary jump to survive such conditions, the likes of which would be unlikely among a group of a hundred or a thousand or even 10,000 people. The first human birth on Mars would be celebrated more than Neil Armstrong's first step on the moon. But 
What about the hundred miscarriages before it? Or the almost certain short, painful life for that new Martian baby? I want to be wrong about this, so I hope you can share with me in the comments some science to support the plausibility of a viable human birth in the one-third gravity, high-radiation, subterranean, mole-folk environment of Mars. Please, man, if you got it, share it. Mass death equals bad PR. Yeah, mass deaths will happen. A loss of pressure, a faulty this or that valve filled with coolant, and too many other factors are likely to cause events where anywhere from a quarter to a hundred percent of a given colony will collapse. If humans go to Mars to settle, they will be viewed with reverence on Earth, and their deaths would and will be crushing to the endeavors overall. You just can't have dozens or hundreds of the most famous explorers in human history die on YouTube without it chilling the entire project. I would love more than almost anything to see humans on Mars in my lifetime. But the logistical problems are not merely ones of cost or technological limitations. No, they're due to the sheer overwhelming complications which arise from the overriding physics of the challenge. There will be no human settlement on Mars by the year 2300. We'd have to master human genetic engineering to even stand a chance, and that, for today at least, remains a task beyond our science and beyond our appetite for human experimentation. So a quick thanks to my amazing gracious Patreons who get early access, exclusive content, and help a keep the channel running. For as little as a buck a month, I just can't do it without you guys, and I thank every last one of you. Thank you guys. Thank you all. Thank you so much. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me all your insights and outsized ad hoc speculation in the comments below. And as always, my friends, stay tuned, stay juicy, and I simply cannot wait to hear from you clever robots with a 20-minute delay from the surface of Mars.